What is up, everybody? Welcome back to the Montana Method Podcast one more time. Nelson Rodriguez, author of Montana Method. Today, I have a smash and grab episode for you guys. Some serious golden nuggets in the digital marketing space. Introducing you to TNA Associates, two gentlemen I'm very close with. Have some serious, serious in-depth knowledge on what you can do to grow your social media and drive people to your online product. Stay tuned. I've been out here hustling all my life. Every day we get into it. Really out here in these streets. That's day and night. Like there's nothing to it. When I was going through it, dog, I never got your call. I never asked for nothing, no. But now I want it all. Promise I'ma do it. Came from rags to riches. Rags to riches. Came from rags to riches. Rags to riches. Came from rags. Mr. Nick Delgado and Mr. Enrique, what's up, bro? What's up, guys? How's it going? Happy to be here. I'm happy to have you. Thank you. This thank is you. great. Yeah, this is, uh, I was telling him earlier, like, yeah, I haven't done this in a while. Kind of reminds me of high school. This is super fire. Yeah, yeah. I love podcasting, bro. It's it's definitely, super it's a fun. new wave. We're, yeah, we spoke off, uh, spoke about this off camera. Yeah, it's yeah, yeah. Definitely. Yeah, like, if you're not podcasting, you know what's funny? So you showed me Pat- Patrick Bet David's page. And he just did a town hall, like a political town hall. Yeah. And there's political candidates now that are kind of following his wave, and they're purely campaigning on podcasting. When have you heard of that? That's crazy. Like, Go podcasting see. has changed everything. It's changed everything, and it's honestly part of it's affected the radio industry a lot mm. too. Like in terms of ratings, like it's just so much more convenient. You have yep. an iPhone, Android, YouTube, Spotify, yep. whatever. Yeah. It's just so much more easier. Pull it up. Yeah, yeah more entertaining. For yeah, sure. it is for sure. And the best for part sure. is you can pause, continue, rewind, exactly, you want. Yeah. exactly. What are some podcasts you guys listen to? For besides me, mine. <laughs> besides yours, um, well, I'm a, as you guys know, I'm a sports junkie, so I listen to a lot of sports podcasts. Okay, um, I also like listening to some of the digital marketing. Not any specific, like I don't have one that I follow religiously. It's just more, yeah. much more of either things that are recommended to me yeah, or yeah. things that I find on Twitter um, nope. through like the different conversations, things of that sort. Nope. Well, it's X now. <laughs> X now, yeah. Sorry, sorry. Sorry, Elon, X. <laughs> uh, hey, listen. It, they already posted porn on there, so they might as well. <laughs> Look. <laughs> it's, a dark, it's a dark market in there. Hey, listen, whatever. It's the Wild West. It's freedom of speech and all that, right? Anyway. Nick, what do you listen to like as far as podcasts? Uh, so I've, I just started picking up listening to podcasts, really. Uh, oh. The first one of two that I stumbled on was... Uh, the analytics power hour. Mm. I just started listening to that. Dope. Um, it was the first time hearing kind of like the things that the things that we do, mm. and it was really hard to find like a podcast that was talking about like relevant things happening in the industry, um, advertising, cookies, and just like it went it went really in depth, like attribution, a bunch of crazy stuff. So yeah. it was a uh, it was cool finding and listening to something like that. Super dope. Yeah. The first, so digital marketing and everything obviously is the way, like if you're not marketing your product online or you, your brand online, you're not marketing at all nowadays. If you don't exist on social media, you don't exist, right? So what I love about what you guys do is it's not just about doing it. It's about everybody. So obviously the algorithm is like this black box of Pandora or whatever. You know, you can't really... There's certain things you can put in your favor, but really the only thing in your favor is time. Like, as long as you're putting out the content, something is going to go viral, right? But, like, really saying, damn, this is going to go viral, take it from someone who's dropped thousands, tens of thousands of videos. I always say, man, this is going to go viral. This is great. It does shit. And then the one where I'm like, bro, this is, like, the wackest video I've ever done. Boom. 85,000 views on YouTube. So what what I love about you guys is, you understand that people, I'm the normal person that just wants to put out content, wants to build a brand, but like the whole formula behind it is just way beyond my, first off, I don't have the time to get that in depth and you guys break it down in a way to where anybody can really understand it. Like the first time I spoke with Nick and he broke it down, I was like, wait, I can follow this. This makes sense. And even though there's a lot of moving parts, you guys have figured out a way to break down the digital marketing space into basically Gerber, like baby food, you know? Uh, to a certain extent. I wouldn't say break it down to 
uh, well, as, baby as food. elementary as you can. I, yeah. I guess that, that when you're dealing with an industry that's changing so dramatically over such a small period of time, you have to have a little bit more of a adaptive approach mm. to where you you had you have to take things as they come at you, but you have to make a move essentially. Right. So that could be arguably the the hardest thing to balance, you know, uh, healthy skepticism with. Uh, I mean, I guess you could just break it down like that. Healthy skepticism, having a little bit of skepticism and approaching something in a healthy manner to where you can digest it, understand it, and make sure that you're making the next best move, not trying to think for the five moves ahead. Mm. You know, the grumps. Yes, uh, and, and a lot of that really has to do because the space just changes every single day pr pretty much right like right. you blink and something google comes out with a new a new uh uh some some new guidelines or facebook or meta comes out with some new guidelines right. or whatever the case may be like you have ios 17 that's coming up like things just change so much that like you said you can't really catch yourself thinking too far ahead mm. because if you try to think too far ahead you might end up finding yourself in a situation where like you can't even go past that point right, right. so you definitely have to Think about what's the next best move and, and kind of just be adaptive and be flexible and just understand that, like you said, you can, it's a numbers game. Like you can draw, you could think, hey, I have this great piece of content. I think it's going to do amazing. It has the right messaging and it flops. Definitely. Um, but you can't let that deter you from releasing the next piece of content because sooner or later something's going to stick. And then right. from there you figure out like, okay, what about this specific piece of content? There you go. Allowed, That's allowed for me to like, you know, like, okay, it was this, it was because I said this, or I said it in this tone, or I said it in this manner, or maybe it was the, the, something the as simple, you were talking the about. subject you're talking about, the subject you're talking about, whatever the case may be, like it, you have to be able to figure out that one key element that makes that piece of content hit so then you can go ahead and duplicate that in the other pieces of content mm. but another thing too is it's going to change like it's not always going to be maybe you do have a, a style that um you're able to leverage it over and over and over again but then sooner or later like it's going to fatigue people are right. going to get tired of seeing that so you always have to keep keep up with the different trends that you're seeing on these different platforms whether it's tiktok whether it's instagram i um, mean just seeing the, the seeing the tr seeing what other people are doing the style of videos the topics that they're talking about um a lot of times you're able to even if it's something that like as when you see it the first time you're like oh, it might not really relate to me you can grab certain elements of that and really like turn it around and curate it for your own like right. for your own brand and your own audience so most people when they ask me it's funny that you mentioned style the first thing they ask me is, what is the Montana method? The Montana method is my way of life. It's my Kung Fu. It's what I hope to pass on to the world once I'm not here anymore. So I've noticed that that Montana method, that style of Nelson comes out in all my content, right? And what I love about content and the way creators like me come out and bring that to the marketplace is, it's almost like food, you know? You have, oh, I feel like eating sushi today. I feel like eating Italian food. I feel like eating a burger and that's how I feel about content. Some days I'll feel like just being entertained. Sometimes I need some some positivity, some mindset stuff, kind of what I talk about. Other days I just want to look at cat memes. You know, that's that's kind of how content is, except for TikTok. I, don't even get me started on TikTok, bro. That's like everybody's viral except me. <laughs> Take it personal. Don't even get me started. You know what it is, though? I'm not going to sell out. Like, I don't want to be the – I'm not going to dance in underwear. I'm not going to do it. You know what I mean? I'm not going to do it. I don't think that's worth it. It's not worth it. I don't. I don't think so either. Because hey. anybody could go viral doing some really dumb, stupid stuff. It's the question is, can you go viral being yourself? That's a, that's a good one. I think it's more importantly, like who who are you trying to, who are you trying to, get the attention of? Because mm. I think it's not. If you look at it like, oh, I'm gonna do anything. It's okay. You're either gonna reach someone who's going to endlessly just scroll on their phone mindlessly. Um, and it's just, they're looking for this, um, this engage or this engaged relationship where you're there, but you're not there. You know, your subconscious just like scroll death. Right. Um, and then there's other people who are looking for specific pieces of information for like me, for example. Um, 
I like looking at uh, like data stuff and science stuff and maybe even uh, the combination of both. So like medium, mm. I look at a lot of different uh, articles that come out on medium. Um, there's LinkedIn uh, for me is like awesome. It's like, especially because the people are so willing to provide information and education around things that I'm interested in. Mm. So that's where I really think it comes down to like, who are you trying to get the attention of and why? And if you can understand that now you're not worrying about if I go viral or not, it's like, okay, I am further capturing my audience. I am, a lot of people don't understand like the law of averages, right? So if I have one like, and I make a video like that and the next, the next one gets two likes, right? That video with saying that specific thing in the first three seconds, right? I'm going to keep on going in that direction because the law of averages, if I continue to increase, my average will therefore increase as well, right? And I think a lot of people don't get or understand that concept. Uh, it's not why, it's what. Mm. What did I do? Mm. What what gave this the 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 energy it needed to get in front of a hundred thousand people? Mm. That's what I think the cool question that people have to start asking because it's not it's not the other way around. It's almost like it's a little selfish if it's if it's one way and not the other, right? Because right. it's like you're a creator, you're trying to serve, um, you're trying to create things that people are interested. You're trying to talk about things or say things to motivate people. Some people are looking for motivation. Some people are looking for, um, you know, it could be recipes for vegans, you know, like trying to spice up their life um, and get a little bit more crazy with the spices and different oils and stuff. It's depending on what you're looking at and who's going to give that to you. And I think that that's a really important aspect of, of what uh, not only people need to know, but what the digital marketing kind of advertising scene needs to realize. Mm -hmm. And you also have to understand too, I think a lot of a lot of people that are trying to learn digital marketing or consider themselves digital marketers but are not as knowledgeable when it comes to these things. Bro, if I had a penny for every digital marketing course I see on social media. Oh, oh bro, <laughs> everyone everyone's a digital marketer. According to YouTube bro. and Google and all the, everything that comes up, everyone <laughs> and their mama is is bro, a is a digital marketer. Tell me about it. But I think it's understanding that not every single platform is for you. Um and sometimes people have a hard time kind of conceptualizing that mm. uh, or they're too scared to try to expand because they don't hear about other friends that have businesses that are in other platforms. Right. But other platforms, like depending on what you're selling or, wh or what you're trying, like whatever your brand is made of, whether it's a service or a product, certain certain platforms are going to work better for you. Like if, if you're in a service based industry, like, for example, like trucking insurance, right? Like you're probably odds are you. You know, something like Instagram, Facebook does well. Um, TikTok does extremely well as well. But another platform that a lot of people probably won't consider is LinkedIn. Mm. And it's literally the number one place to go to because you have so many people within that space that are working there that you can build connections. Mm. It's a little different because you're not going directly to the consumer and saying like, hey, like, come, you know, come get insurance for me. Like, you're a trucker, you need insurance, come do it, come do it with us. But you're you're communicating with people that, that have connections within the, the specific industry that are not recommending your business to, to building consumer. a community. You're building it's more a community. about community at that point. And it's, it's a different angle. It's a different approach, but it's being able to have the flex, like being flexible, being adaptable and understanding that I don't need to do what everyone else is doing. Like I can, if everyone's going right. It's okay for me to turn left. Obviously you don't want to go too far off left and veer off, but it's okay to figure out what's on this side because sometimes the grass might be greener on this side. Mm. And then all of a everything. sudden yeah, you sure. really got to try everything. You really do. But drop the things that don't, like, that aren't working. Like, be objective. Don't allow something to kind of consume you emotionally. It's like, oh, why isn't this working? It's like, well, you know, a lot of it's research. Mm -hmm. A lot about, a lot, a lot of what people don't understand is that this is all based off of what's currently out there. Mm. Right? That's what these algorithms are intended. It's like a ranking system. Right? It's, uh, 
So like Google, very much like a, a rank, whether first, second, third, fourth spot, right? Um, video, um, content, if it's some sort of algorithm to where it's trying to capture a certain impression or capture a moment with someone, all now depends on the medium, mm. right? What kind of what kind of content are you displaying? And if it's it's just a, it's a wild world. You it's a wild. There's so many ways to get your voice out there. I think that's why everybody's a digital marketer per mm -hmm. se, <laughs> because they consider themselves in the world of digital marketing. But at the end of the day, someone who does content could be considered a digital marketer. Right. Someone who does a search engine optimization. I don't even, you know, no, that's another whole different world, but content marketing, that's a digital marketer. Someone who does ads, that's a digital marketer. Uh, uh, someone who just works on a website, right? Gets people to buy a certain product, right? Either with a, like a, a percentage off or something. That's a digital marketer. Mm. A digital marketer is a very br a broad term. I think people need to be very choosy on what they actually need, not what their what the industry is, what's the term for the larger bubble, right. right? Digital marketing, okay, cool, but what do you need as a brand? You need to find out the mediums and channels that best relate to your target audience. You know, it's like, who am I trying to talk to? I'm not trying to, like you, I don't, maybe TikTok's not the exact, it's not outperforming others because of the fact that, well, if I'm thinking TikTok, I'm thinking probably younger kids. Right. If I'm thinking Instagram, Facebook, I'm thinking a little bit older. Facebook, for sure, the majority are a right. little bit older. Right. Instagram's kind of in it's the like middle. It's generation, Instagram. It's, it's very generational. That's another thing that a lot of people don't consider. Mm. Uh, MySpace. Of course. <laughs> that if you if you had a MySpace, you ask any twenty year old, I don't even think, you know? They, don't even know they weren't even in a position to where a MySpace would be yeah. even an option. Yeah, yeah. They've heard about it, but that's it. Right. Even at that. It's like an urban I, legend. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Did you hear about this thing, MySpace, bro? And this guy named Tom. Like my older cousin who's like fifteen years bro, he's so old. He's fifteen years older than me. He talks well copying and thing. pasting the copying and pasting the layouts. Oh. Right? When that's when the you know borrowing or that's when people were getting give me basically doing handing out code for a layout you, if you knew how to copy and paste it you could pretty much do whatever you want that was kind of prehistoric of uh, digital marketing it was yeah. web development <laughs> ux ui yeah yeah Yo. ux ui design i mean it all comes down to it it's literally like hey look web development app development myspace well, it wasn't an app. It was just a website, right? It was right? a website, yeah. Yeah, bro. now I'm, I'm, I'm already <laughs> 10 years ahead, so I'm thinking, damn, did they have an app? No. No, no, no The cell no. phones were in that advance They were in that advance Bro, would, I would pay money to see Zuckerberg versus Tom from MySpace in like a UFC fight or some shit. No. That would be awesome. <laughs> you know what's crazy? You know, now I'm just trying to think of Tom, and I'm like, Tom. Tom, oh, What bro. does he look like? <laughs> bro, you don't, you don't remember that? You know what's crazy? <laughs> He had that stupid ass picture. You know, you know what's crazy about him that he literally like he sold MySpace and no one ever heard about Nobody. him. Nobody. He, he completely disappeared. disappeared. He sold MySpace. He did. He's. I, I believe it was it was the Japanese that that bought it. Or, really? Or I don't know. They I, tried, I tried to do something like post Facebook era. Well, after after he sold it, like that's where it just and then Facebook kind of it worked uh, out perfectly. You know, okay, it was like okay. one that's was going this way. Started. Got the it. wave changed. What was before? What was before MySpace? Nothing. No, no, no. Actually, before TikTok, what did you? You brought it up to me the other day. What was the one that was before TikTok? There was a Vine. Vine. No, yes. Vine. Was, yeah, Vine, Vine was, was amazing. Huge. Vine was amazing. And it was super funny. It really was. It, it, it was, was a, the first version of TikTok. It really right? was. Actually, yeah. And I loved yeah. it because the videos were. I mean, you knew it was six seconds. What? So you you were going yeah, through. You were right. running through content like Dude. this. Well, that's when they found out that hey, look, if I can hook you for six seconds. Now they're now in reality you're just chasing. Right. You're nope. chasing. Honestly, in a sense, these guys know what they're doing. You know, it's, yeah. a, it's like it's 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 a phone. Yep. You're looking for the next shot of dopamine. Right. You're looking for the next, uh, you know, uh, high. Whether it's a laugh or some new piece of information right. or yeah. something about somebody that now you can tell somebody else. Yeah. Dude. It's. I mean, there's millions and millions and millions of dollars that go into research 
on, you know, what kind of information uh, is important to people and what they're willing, how much time they're willing to spend consuming all that info. You ready for me to blow your mind? Louis Vuitton spent $3 billion last year in marketing. $3 billion. Is that fact? That's Earth? fact. You That's can look fact. that up. That's 15% of their gross revenue. <laughs> if people are willing to pay and invest money to get your attention that bad, how valuable is your attention? That's what I try to tell people. You don't know what you're doing to your life when you're just like, bro, your attention is gold. It's gold. Attention is the new money. Attention is the new money. It's everything. Attention, and it's crazy because I forgot the statistic. It's like 85% of the attention is is occupied by like 5% of the population. Some, it's like Kim Kardashian, Drake, those kind of accounts have 85% of, of the eyeballs on them. It's Attention is a commodity, man. It really is. And whoever has the most eyeballs, you're a powerful human being. You well, that's why the advertising is so... Is, is such a lucrative space because it's if you're able to go beyond like and think like a marketer and say okay so who's my audience and then now i can guarantee you that if there's two brands one brand invests in marketing and the other brand doesn't and one brand is constantly showing pieces of content a customer is probably going to be more likely to buy from the person who's doing some advertising versus not right it's like it's 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 logical. It's, it's no brainer. Right. Now you got to realize that it's, there's a cost, right? Mm -hmm. So in advertising, it's like a cost per click or a cost per, it's not one impressions. It's a thousand. Right. So, uh, that's your CPM. So it really is about, it's in fact, yes, it's a hundred percent. That is the liquid or not the liquid, the, the digital gold of our era, right? It's how can how long or how many times can you capture someone's attention or get them to think about something? And if you're always thinking about it, odds are that when it comes to whether you're going to buy it or not, uh, you know, that information is going to help guide that decision. Mm. So, Yeah. It'll get, and it's only going to get more expensive. It's only going to get more expensive, I'll, I'll the add, more digital. I'll add to that too. Um, I think part also too, you're, you're willing to spend this kind of money in advertising because you understand whatever, whether it's, it's Louis spending a 3 billion or someone that spends a thousand a month or, or right. 5,000, regardless of the budget, not everyone has a different buying decision, right? Like some people, they have the their more impulse, more impulse, right? Like it's like, hey, I'm gonna, I see it, I need, I need it, right? Some people are a little more depends collective. what financial class exactly, you fall into. exactly. Yeah. So even even then, like you, I might see your brand for the first time today, but and I might, you know, tell myself, you know what, I'll probably get this like in a month or two, right? Mm. But if I stop seeing your ads or I just stop hearing about you, eventually I'm just gonna forget. And then maybe I see a competitor and I end up buying it from the competitor. Maybe even I like at that moment I'm like, hey. What was the name of that brand? Now I don't remember. I'm trying to like find it. Can't find it too hard at a certain point. Mm. Have a competitor right in front of me. I'm going to go straight to the competitor. But if I keep seeing your brand, I keep seeing your ads, and you're constantly reminding me of this product, sooner or later, like if I already told myself, you know, I'm, I want this. It's not a priority. I'm just going to get it down the road. Eventually, I'm, I'm going to become that customer, right? Right. But like we always have this conversation about with uh, with digital marketing. It's all about the lifetime, lifetime customer value, right? If, if it might take you three, four months to get me, acquire me, it might be at first for that first purchase, extremely costly. But if as a brand, you do your job and you have a great product and I love my experience from the moment from me going on the site, going through the whole customer journey, um, the, the, the part where the shipping, where you're sending me my product, the unboxing experience, how you packaged it, the little small details, more than likely, I'm going to come back and make that second, that third, right. that fourth and that fifth purchase. So eventually you're, you are going to get that money out of me. And then if I really love it a lot, I'm going to tell my friends, I'm going to tell this person, I'm going to tell that person, I'm going to post it on my social media page. Oh guys, you need to find hear about this brand, et cetera, et cetera. So, um, it definitely matters. You know, advertising is very important. Like how much effort you put behind it and, um, branding. The, the, too, the, yeah. and the branding too like it you matters. can put you can put yeah you can you can probably show some some pretty wild stuff to people and they might not be interested but it was crazy because you mentioned see that like anticipating almost predicting someone's next move 
is I think a very important aspect of it mm-hmm. as well because when he when he just said he goes so you don't remember the name of the brand and you go on your phone and maybe you look at what it is so or what what that brand is so you start typing in some words like either uh, white box mm-hmm. gold <laughs> label yep. um, shiny product hair care whatever it is right and now you're searching for that mm. right so as a so I'm more of an analyst right as an analyst I'm anticipating or attempting to predict someone's next move so I see something right there's odds are that it's going to be a competitive space what happens if I don't have enough money to continue to show my my product to those people right well, I'm investing into other channels, so maybe when I, they do search me up, maybe when they put in those words that are maybe or maybe not relevant to what I sell, that I might be one of those first three options, mm-hmm. right? Or anything. It's now, it's now you're just trying to catch the words mm-hmm. that are relevant to you, the product you're selling, and right. that's SEO. That's SEO, yeah. So what I thought, what... What made things made sense for me is when you put a face and a, a kind of like a product to the name of the process and I saw what you did with that product, right? So the way I, my brain works is if I, if I hear a story and I kind of follow the steps of what you were trying to tell me and I see that story play out, oh, okay, now I understand like la cucaracha, la cucaracha, na, no quiere caminar. And I kind of see the thing play out on my brain. For whoever doesn't speak Spanish, don't even worry about what I just said. <laughs> so, point, what was my point? When you guys showed me the fix and you guys showed me Brendan, now I was like, wait, okay, so this is what's possible with this kind of stuff? Like, you can take this from this here to like way over here in a pretty fast pace when you use these cycles and these things. And the, it's pretty, it's pretty sick. It's, yeah, but now. <laughs> The world's changing completely, and then that's an example of an individual who loves not only what he does, but what he represents, mm-hmm. right. and the intentions are true, and he understands value and what the value that he's bringing. So from it goes back to it. Who are you trying to capture the attention of? And if those, if your intention is, is true, in a sense, if you're trying to are you trying to provide information that they're going to be considering valuable? And are you going to be honest about that message? For me, I, I'm going to preach this until I'm blue in the face. I say this every episode. You have to be passionate about what you do. You do. If you don't have passion for what you do, you're just going to get to a point where you're going to hate your life. If you don't love what you do, stop doing it. You have to love what you do. And you can tell by his content, the way he does it, the way he answers questions, how how personal it is to him that he enjoys what he does and it comes off in his content. That's why his content does well. Yeah. If if you, if you truly love what you do, you're going to be, you're going to be very enthusiastic about the information that you're, you're providing people because this is like your, uh, you know, it's part of the, the, the mantra, the Bible that you're kind of writing Mm -hmm. about whatever it is, like some sort of, uh, some sort of guide, that, hey, look, and it's backed by specific pieces of information that you're really just trying to, you're trying to just give away for free. So when it comes to, all right, what what's it, what's it like from, because obviously I'm on the other side, I'm on the content creation side, so there's the consumer, the content creator, and then there's you guys, which is basically what you guys do is, instead of making my process a slow, steady process, you're like, all right, how can we do... I was going to bring this up later, but I'm going to bring this up now. You know who someone... Everybody hates him, but I don't give a shit. I love the guy because of what he's done. What Andrew Trade did was was genius because he had so many of these accounts putting out all his content. It wasn't even... He didn't give, He didn't care that it wasn't, it wasn't his account. He said, I'm going to be omnipresent, right? I'm going to be across the board, a million different little accounts that all pushing my videos. And it's going to seem like you can't get away from me. And then, boom, I'm the most Google man on the planet, right? So that's what I think. That's You guys are that process of bringing someone's brand from, all right, he's here and he wants to get here. Instead of it taking him four or five years or ten years like it took 
a Valutainment or a Patrick Bet David or a Grant Cardone, how can we do that in six months like it took Andrew Tate? And those are the kind of conversations that it's like, wow, it really is possible to do that nowadays. You know what I mean? So what are what are some things that you guys... So let's say I'm a brand new content creator and maybe use me as an example, right? I have a website, I have a brand, I have a book, I have a, a Shopify, whatever. So what? what walk me Look through... Look at your top three competitors. Mm-hmm. Start, I, you didn't even have I, to finish the sentence. It's pretty broad though. So you got to start somewhere though. Yeah, start somewhere. And you would slowly <laughs> find who is... Who not only you like, because obviously you're probably going to like the stuff that certain people are putting out right. over others. And then who who comes as close as possible as coming to be labeled as your competitor, right? Like who's, who's talking about the same exact stuff that you're talking about or that you want to talk about, right? Uh, because it's always about before and after, right? What... What has happened? What is going to happen? What's, what am I going to put out into the world that either nobody has talked about yet or uh, that they're already talking about? Mm. Because okay. trends are real. Andrew, that whole thing, when he first started, um, I, well, when I was first introduced to who he was as a person, I saw the first image wasn't the same as the image that it is now. Mm -hmm. I think he's trying his best. Like, I think he realized like, hey, like um, I'm gonna say some things that may not be uh, PC, right? May not be uh, censored. And I'm gonna say them in a way that maybe not everybody's gonna like, Mm. but it did catch a lot of people's attention. It did, it It started a conversation. It started a conversation, (laughs) then, I think obviously some pieces of content get more attention than others. And again, who are you, who are you serving as a, as an audience? Right. Is the, is the things that I'm, are the, are the pieces of content I'm serving you going to be absolutely ridiculous? Right. Like just out of the blue, like what, what did you just say? Or is it going to be something that's going to hit you emotionally? Right. And that's when it comes down to it. Because if I can if I can have an emotional tie and you feel that connection, mm-hmm. odds are you're probably going to listen to the next one. Yep. Or s- look for something that I'm also per- to see what other golden nugget I can find. Right. And, I, and, and something I'll add to that, too, is not every piece of content is meant for every single person. Of right? course. Of course. Um, you might have 100,000 followers, but the video you're posting today might really only resonate for to 10 percent of that. Right. Um, it, it, like you said, it comes down to. Like, yeah, you find that one piece of content that speaks to you. And now it's like, okay, now I'm on the page. Now I'm looking for other pieces of content that also speak to me. Right. Um, and, yeah, I think with him, too, it, it was knowing, understanding that you can have very controversial sound bites on these social media platforms um, and kind of mixing it in with everything else and just really constantly just making sure he was always the topic of conversation because there was always there was always a different video I almost felt like every week that would come out of him right. saying something right um and <laughs> one of the things that we've noticed just um advertising on social media is when you can start a conversation it's just very powerful because very now powerful. you have real people that are engaging in these posts um having going at it sometimes i mean it gets very dark like especially on twitter or, or x um <laughs> when you're in there like you're looking at these threads and whatever the case may be and it could get deep. It could get very personal. Yeah. You see people like take things very seriously and they start attacking others. But f- for someone like Andrew Tate, that's that's what he was looking for. You know, you want to be able to, for him, it was very beneficial to create that because then it's like, okay, I know when I drop this piece of content, all these individuals that are all arguing here yep. are going to start arguing over here again. Which is and why, it just carries over. Which is why that one video I have is performing so well because you have a bunch of people just say, ah, like hating stray haters dog you know what i mean oh, okay in. so the comments yeah, yeah, yeah. Comments you gotta matter. look at what are the signals that's mm-hmm. what you would have to like break that down as so as this is all kind of like uh in a in a gray area called like algorithmic modeling you're trying to figure out what are the signals that i'm sending and by who uh piss people off episode over no <laughs> <laughs> comments likes yeah. um shares Right, uh, just like taking Instagram as an example, DMs. Mm. Right, mm-hmm. um, every placement is different. Right, whether you're on the on your home or you're you're searching for something. Right, uh, 
on a specific feed, if you're looking through reels versus stories, these are all different placements. Mm -hmm. Right. These are all the windows of the house per se, right? And what I'm displaying in each and every single window has to have a purpose. Right. Because if it has a purpose, then, well, it doesn't have, well, it should if you're trying to do it effectively in terms of costs, right? right? If you're trying to be cost effective, if you're trying to use your budget, because this is from, from an advertising perspective, but just from a messaging perspective, you know, these are people that are on the platform and they're looking to be consumed by what mm -hmm. they're engaging in. And that's when a lot of this controversy takes place right. because it's, they, they really think that what their opinion is going to, is going to spark something to, to the, to the profile, right? Or to the, to the, to the owner of the Instagram, right? It's like they're prompting your reaction. And by participating in that, not only are you giving them an extra boost, but now you're starting what could be a domino effect mm -hmm. within the ether, right? Because now one comment led to another, which led to another because it's with a social network, you have uh, a bunch of people that they all know each other, right? Or super, certain groups of people. So you could see it as like a dot, right? And every dot mm -hmm. has a connection with a certain amount of other dots, which are the friends. And if you were to kind of create some sort of visualization there, you'd see a lot of dots. Mm -hmm. And those dots have a lot of lines to other dots, some more than others. And that's how you start to get a deeper understanding of, okay, what is a social platform? What is a social search engine? What is a, you know, it's, what is a social algorithm? Mm. It's a bunch of different algorithms combined together to make sure that your user experience, uh, it's captivating, it's engaging and, sometimes even more so like on the other side of things it's addicting it's addicting yeah it's addicting so that's where there's a really fine line of what you do as an advertiser right what you're what message you're trying to to share whose message cuz yeah. it could you know there's that's why we were out. That's yeah, why we're out of the agency space. Yeah, yeah. No, no, no. That's, that's an interesting message that you bring up, uh, bringing going back to the original point that you said how everybody, anybody who creates content or does this or has a website, it can be considered a digital marketer. Everybody is an advertiser, right? Yeah. Uh, to some extent. Some extent. Everybody. Right. I, so you guys know my background is in sales. Whenever somebody, oh no, I don't want to be sold. And it's just like, bro, don't even get me started on that subject. You saw your kids on why sh they should clean up their room. You saw your husband on why he should take you out to dinner. You saw your husband on why he should give you this amount of money to go spend on whatever. You like, you get what I'm saying? So, and that's how I feel about marketing and advertising. It's you're always advertising something. So you're always communicating. Yeah. Always, and you're an always effective communica communicator yeah, has right. the world in his hands. Yes, so the world does. is yours, right? And it's all about so, how you word it. Exactly. So an effective communicator, com like the way you advertise something, the way you market something, the way you display something to the world, that's how I see advertising, displaying something to the world. It's everything. It's a, it's a form of communication and advertising is nothing more than a medium. It's nothing more. Like there's, there's a certain person for every picture or video out there. Mm -hmm. It just depends at where they are. Mm -hmm in their life or where they are in, you know, on a geographic region, mm. right? Sometimes there's not going to be any service. So a billboard's all I'm going to get as a, you know, as a promotion. Right. Right. Or sometimes you're in the middle of Times Square and there's nothing but promotions around you. Right. On top of the fact that you're on your phone and you're getting hit by thousands of ads on three to five different platforms that you're probably on. You know, there's, it can really differ depending on your location. Uh, and overall, you're just your geographical region, right? Because right. that's certain, certain brands know that in certain places, people are going to be more 
likely to agree or buy from whatever. But it, yeah, it's all it's, it all comes down to communication. It, it's a, what you are communicating and whether or not that has a story and the, not a story in the sense of some sort of conflict. There's a beginning, there's a middle, and there's an end. Mm. That's, if you're a storyteller, right? First, I'm going to tell you, first, I'm going to show you something, how great it is. Next, I'm going to show you a friend that also mm -hmm. agrees with what I'm saying. And maybe that mm -hmm. friend is really, you know, a, a, a really extra or valuable source of authority in that conversation, mm -hmm. right? Third, now I'm going to tell you the price, mm -hmm. right? It's nothing about a sell or it's, 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 it, it well, it mm -hmm. is, it's, it is about the sell. It is about the product. It is, but it's every single consistent piece has communication involved. Mm -hmm. And if you know what, how, what to communicate, why to communicate, and actually, if you actually know what their answers are going to be, right, you can predict those answers, not only in a digital, but even in an interaction, human to human, right, uh, just a normal conversation. You can probably, if you know what they're going to say, you could probably gear them left or right, in a sense, right? Like, mm -hmm. I think so. That's a theory. I mean, if, if you know your opponent's moves before they do, you know, that's... Chess, I'm big at chess. I'm, I, I love chess. Chess is, people underestimate, people see just see pieces on our board, but when I see chess, I see a lot of, like, mental strategies that you can use in life. And in chess, based on your playing style, I can tell your attitude as a person. If you're very conservative and you don't take risks, that means that's how you are as a person, as right? A person, yeah. Me, in my, the way I play chess is I take big risks. I put the queen out first, and I do all these things. So... <clears throat> Based on how I want, what I want to draw out of my opponent when I play chess is how I play. So if I want to test him to see if he's aggressive, I'll start playing conservative in the beginning. If I see he that that he's, you know, wants to play a certain way or hide or I always play. It's like a reverse psychology, yeah. right? And I see a lot of that in what you're talking about. Depending on what you can do, you can find out what their reaction is going to be ahead of time. And you can do these things. And once you know what the reaction is going to be. 100%. It's game over. It's game you know? over. And that's why the, the second part where he was saying um, being able to show, like, grab a specific individual and, like, predict what that reaction is is why user-generated content is so big right now. Mm. You can – it's about how you communicate it, but I think it's also being able to come off as authentic and genuine. Right. When you see these people sharing their testimonies, real experiences, and they're giving you this raw material – where it's because sometimes like you can tell when someone when a brand hires like a real individual and they're like, hey, you know, we want you to create this video. Right. Like it looks a little scripted. You start noticing that they're kind of looking like at something behind the camera. They're trying to see <laughs> yeah. like yeah. you could tell like you automatically, especially if you yep. have an eye, eye for like yeah, me, yeah, yeah, yeah. me do like you, you see, tell right you away. You see your eyes like. Yes. And it looks so yeah. bad. Like it's it terrible. But when you can get that raw, authentic reaction where someone is like, oh, my God, like, that's I why love I refuse this so to much. script my podcast. Oh, no, it's it's it's, it's better yeah. like this. It's better to have it genuine, and authentic, because the person on the other end is also going to feel it, too. And they're going to say, OK, like the likelihood that these people are trying to like um, they're trying to lie to me, scam, whatever the case may be. It's a lot lower and you feel a lot 100%. more, a lot safer. And, and when you're on the site reading the reviews and things of that sort, you, it just feels like a much more it's personalized and more mm -hmm. credible. Definitely. Man, I wish I could remember the, the name of this guy that started this company. It's a, I was watching this podcast where this guy used kind of like the Andrew Tate strategy. He started a company where he started selling these chocolates. And it was like these, these he was selling an experience because the chocolate bar was $30. But the way he tied it in was it was like a sexual chocolate. You split it in two, you eat a piece, and then you give a piece to your partner. And it's like supposed to like before you have sex or whatever. And the way he did it was genius because he got all these people like he, to post all these all this content about his product and all these different pages. And then it blew up. Man, I wish I knew that. The, I wish I would have wrote down the name of the company before I came here. But anyway. It goes back to what that that what we're talking about, like those reactions, right? So what he would do is once he had a video that he knew went viral on one page, he'd take it, he'd get another influencer, be like, hey, all right, he, that, they started a YouTube Shorts page with this guy, this already went viral over here, post it over here. Or oh, it didn't work with you, he'd get somebody else, put open another account, boom, it went viral. So he he came up with this formula of like every time a video went viral, he'd reel it in, give it to somebody else, post it on another account, and go viral again, like. 
it was pretty crazy because he was basically using the same video on all these different accounts and it was hitting every single time. Yep. Imagine you knew the number of the lottery, like before the lottery came out. And that's what he I'm was so doing. glad you said that because yeah. it's about quantifying success. Yes. Mm -hmm. it lit yeah. And it goes back to what I said before, the law of averages, right? I think what he was doing was he was taking a measurable approach mm. to uh, producing a certain outcome, right? which is analytics. Right. You're trying. There is no there is no analytics if there is no measurement. There is it's it's you, analytics is, in fact, the recording mm. of uh, information so you can measure it Definitely. against one another. Right. Because that's that's the whole point. You're trying to figure out what's working and what's not. What is uh, and that's what it comes down to. Either it's you're going in with a question and that question has. Um, results or outcomes that you're uh, looking to to prove and if obviously you can do it over and over and over again and get the same exact result that's measurable it's quantifiable and it's repeatable right it's like this it's like sixth grade science right the scientific right. method mm -hmm. um, getting down to that it's actually it's applicable to so many things and aspects of life I just feel like society's a little bit uh, behind in that aspect of that regard it's uh, the application uh, the application of analytics to just business opportunity in general uh if you're not taking a measurable approach to to life then are you really trying right are you if you have a goal how do you know if you complete that goal mm. right is it quantifiable is it measurable mm -hmm. and at the end of the day it's only going to be scalable if it's repeatable so going through that kind of checklist, you know, if we only knew that that in sixth grade when they were teaching it to us, right? Mm, yeah. uh, under the certain restraint, uh, under the certain constraints of elementary school, um, it, it's a science project. Either you know you're you're a scientist. I tell my I tell my mom that all the time. My like, mom, I'm a scientist. <laughs> Bullshit. <laughs> Why are you lying? You sit in front of a computer all day, Nicholas. All day. What are you talking about? Nicola. <laughs> you don't, yeah, because in her head, she's thinking like, oh, you know, science. What is science? It's it's it's, 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 it's a test tube. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, it's, and it's chemicals Adam, that can burn my skin <laughs> off. Yeah, but it, it really is all of that. It is. It, it's things that are moving. It's understanding things in normal or in in society today. Right. And, and being able to measure things that maybe you couldn't measure before and figuring mm. out some way to do that. Right. And it's and the sad part about it is within our industry, I feel like it's something that a lot of people are having a hard time adjusting and understanding. Oh, and it's intimidating. Yeah. Right. Because, like you said, it's all trying to uh, quantify and measure things that no one has ever probably, like, you know, it's, it's kind of like it's all new. You, age. It's on you. And it's you conceptualizing all these different things and trying to find what works for you and like really revolutionizing the way that digital marketing is being done but it's something that scares a lot of individuals right. it's like why am i gonna go down this whole rabbit hole like i don't know if it's if, if i'm even gonna be able to figure it out so i don't want to be on me yeah it's beyond me it's i don't want to waste my and time I, and i case i don't even want i don't even want to bring it into the conversation mm -hmm. because i won't be able there's two approaches that jet people generally take or business owners a i just ignore it i pretend like it doesn't exist mm -hmm. And I, and I run away from it. And hopefully, if I do that, it'll just go away. Mm. And then there's another perspective that now they try to understand. And then they're left with only two decisions. Mm. Either they get frustrated and revert back to uh, decision one. Right. Or have the patience and bring on a necessary team that can help you, a mm -hmm. trusted circle, because it's no one's intended to do this alone, mm. right? We're going, we're moving into yep. an era that is going is a hundred percent digital. NFTs, right. and going back to going back to the influencers with the chocolates. Look at what a group of people were able to do. They grew a brand from nothing to. 10 million with, in di with a digital Crazy. product with Crazy. not even something physical or tangible but with a digital product and what seemed to be a good idea and getting the attention of people who are interested look what that was able to achieve nuts yeah
it's either it could be seen as a proof of concept or the biggest scheme that's ever gone down in in history of fraud. I mean, but hey. Yeah, we won't we won't even get into that. No, that's because, for another conversation. Because I mean, you're gonna get me started talking about like what the government and the bank doesn't. Let's not even <laughs> anyway. <laughs> so, but going back to that, right? There's intrinsic value in anything. If someone walks in this door and pays me a million dollars to have a conversation with me, am I worth a million dollars now? Maybe. Maybe it's just a one-off. Who knows? What I think is interesting is that's why I love the free market because the market determines your, your value. It's not... The oh, buyer. It's No, it's the market. Like, yeah, which is... It, it, it's the buyer. It's the buyer, the end consumer always determines because if that yes. if it's if that is if they need it if they need it some people are willing to they, pay anything they now think they need it now well mm-hmm. define need you mm-hmm. know yeah, need yeah, exactly. you can have a bunch of different uh, definitions yeah, yeah. of need right. like i need what you need water and food it, okay those are 100 those are <laughs> you need those so now, now that we live in this society where you can have it's all at your fingertips yep. you can have anything instantly that's right? what people say gratification about, so. and that's another thing that's wild that's yeah that's a problem that's a problem and that's what's that's what so where do you draw the line it. between marketer and manipulator if you work with people that you believe in their product and that you believe in what what they say and that their 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 value system their mm-hmm. core system that's why, yeah, we have a unique set of skills that not even going to get into detail of what they are, but we help people grow and achieve their dreams. And you sound like me. <laughs> I love it. <clears throat> I love it. If I if I want to if I want to help somebody achieve what they want to achieve, and I and I look at it and it's like, okay, what are they trying to achieve? And I does that align with what I think is valuable to, you know, and I, it's a yes or no decision. And then you, you either help them or you don't. Mm. And some people, some people don't even, some people are just looking for guidance. Right. That's the funny thing that a lot of people, <clears throat> a lot of people are just looking for help. And some people are so, so stingy with their advice that they won't even give it to them unless they pay them $250 yep. an hour, which is yep. absurd. Again, that's why we we moved away from that agency model because we saw it was the industry itself is turning over. On the itself. age of the middleman is dying. It's dying rapidly. I, I'll never forget. <clears throat> I saw a movie called, you guys know I'm big into gangster movies, right? No, obviously Scarface. But there's this English movie called Layer Cake. I highly recommend you watch this movie if you've never seen it. Daniel Craig is the star. Among Tom Hardy, there's like some really famous guys when they were younger. Anyway, there's this mega million drug dealer that's never, no one's ever heard of, and he shows up like this mysterious guy, and he has like the squad of fifteen body uh, bodyguards, and he walks in to talk to the guy one on one in the room, and he says, "You know what the secret to being a millionaire is? Being a great middleman." And I was like, "Wow, he's right." Being the communicator. Being, being the communicator. <laughs> yup. Because we can talk about Mike Tyson being the greatest greatest fighter of all time, or we can talk about Don King. <laughs> knowing where to place Mike Tyson at the right time and how Strategy. to how to paint him, how to paint him, picking the right fights, knowing which right? opponents. Yep. So that's something I've always found super interesting. The person, it's not what you can do; it's the message, how you can portray this. What can I turn this into? How can I paint this picture? That's why I love telling stories. So telling stories, the art of storytelling is so universal and people don't even understand it. You can apply it to selling a product. You can apply it to a company, a personal brand. You can apply it to so many different things. It's not just an actual story. You know what I mean? So I'm with it, man. Yeah, it's I'm interested. And then we, so let, let's wrap up with, with talking about how AI is going to change or not gonna, it's already changed yeah. everything, right? So, where do you see AI? So, give us an idea of where AI has taken us in the last six months, where AI is taking us, like, right now, and then where do you think it's gonna go from here to maybe a year, two, five? Uh, in the last three months since... We've seen like the release of Chat GPT, Bard, 
um, these large language models are, um, they basically, each one has its own like purpose, you could right. say, but it's, it was able to, it was able to help people expedite what they're trying to achieve because now you're not subject to what you can finish in a 24 hour period. Mm -hmm. We've been able to 10 X our productivity and efficiency by incorporating AI mm -hmm. into our daily workflows where we no longer have to assign the manual task of research or um, an, a task that needs to be either marked down or recorded um, can now um, come to life, right? right in, whether it's text to speech, uh, text to audio, audio to text, mm. right? Uh, text to visual, mm. mid journey. You have all these different platforms That's that. That's my favorite one. I've Cognosis. been able to play with that one and it's, it's powerful. I know you love Cognosis personally. Yeah. So I, yeah, Cognosis, that's another, that's another one um, that you have the power of a task agent, is the technical term, on your computer to either A, search something for you. Mm sign into a platform, obviously given you have the level of credentials. Right. Uh, these tasks, monotonous tasks that have to be, again, repeated over and over and over and over again are now being executed by a new age of workforce. Now, whether you decide to embrace that or, like I said, be the other person that just will ignore it until it's not, hopefully it's not a problem anymore. You're either going to fall on that, on those, those sides of the fence and you're going to have an option. If you choose not to go, you know, with option one, of course, that's probably the worst one is just to ignore it. That's, I wouldn't advise that for anybody who's under 65. Mm. Uh, you're going to have to get people or trust people, come to know people, have conversations. It's going to force everyone to have conversations and to tr and to choose people or an interpreter, right? Comes always back to the <coughs> the guide, the the mediator, the, the the translator. Translators, people who will communicate um, ideas to groups of people, because those two groups of people can't necessarily communicate because they're they're. The, the word choice that they use is very different. And depending on the word choice of the translator is the message that gets transmitted. That to me is crazy because we, we all speak English and Spanish. And I know a million times where we've seen a movie where it's being dubbed in Spanish. Uh -huh. and we're like, that's not what they're saying. A, a interview, like it could be a sports interview or like with a celebrity and it, it's completely different. Don't even say the same yep. words. It's yep. not expressed the same way. Like it's And isn't it crazy that the person that understands Spanish, for example, that's listening to the Spanish stuff is just uh, in, interpreting a totally different message based yep. on the perspective of the translator? Yep. yep. It's insane to It's me. insane. <laughs> I see it all the time. No, it's crazy. It really, yeah, like, I just yeah. shake it's my gonna head. It's going to be a crazy world when you <laughs> literally have little earpieces and you can talk to anybody because now the conversation could be had in two different languages, and but you're hearing the cool. responses of the other person in your native language. And your responses are being translated to the other person so I've heard, in their native language. I heard that we already have that, though, if I'm not mistaken. I wouldn't because doubt it. That was just, yeah, I wouldn't doubt it either. The only reason I say that is because I do remember, like, this was, like, maybe, like, 2019, like, 2018. This was when Trump was president. I remember seeing he was speaking... Um, it was like one of those random like press conferences and they had a president from another country. And I do remember like In him piece. having there. And I asked my stepdad about that. He's like, yeah, like they're able, like that, that, that foreign president is speaking in his foreign language, but he's able to understand because through a has, translator right? probably talking in the background though. I'm imagine that it was simultaneous, like within s milliseconds, like live, like live. live. Now nobody has to speak it into a mic and that's going to somebody else. Like there's no translator involved. That translator is essentially just removed from the equation. Now AI is translating that conversation. And one could argue that, you know, that's going to be much executed, much more flawlessly or I don't even know if that makes sense. 
it's going to be a flawless ex uh, execution as compared to perhaps a human because now that translator may or may not pick up on that native dialect or mm -hmm. what is, you know, it's, it's going to be impossible for one human being to know. You know all the isms of the world, yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of like where we're but at it's now. It's possible for an, a an AI to know that. Well, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's imp it's, it's not impossible for a computer to store an infinite amount of information. Right. W soon, soon. This is you know it's there's always, but it can definitely, it can definitely outstore a human brain, for right? Sure. Because there's certain things that we store in our brain that we don't even we can't even recollect at certain moments in time. Haven't you ever been like fuzzy? Oh, it's like oh damn, I know what I'm talking about, yeah. but I don't know exact name. Oh, but then it comes to you. It comes right. To you, yeah. That's like a process, like a like a computer. Like you're processing that information, storing that information, and then re recalling that information. It's like what? almost in that moment, your computer is saying loading. Yeah, and it's just stuck on that little. That's that's loading, why. Loading. That's why I stopped going to Ultra. <laughs> <laughs> I get it, bro. <laughs> oh my god, it's like I want to remember when I have a good time. What's going on here? <laughs> well, I don't think AI is going to be able to help you with that. Yeah. yeah. Well, according to Elon Musk and the and the chips, oh, the in your, chips in your brain. No, I'm, I don't think anyway. I'm not getting chips. Yeah, I'm, I'm not, not getting chipped either. either. I'm just saying it's going to be available. You know. <laughs> oh, I know kung fu now. <laughs> oh, no, I know how to play the piano. Let me inject the Montana method. Yo. Yeah, that would be. Pretty I'm cool. telling you, that's he's basically that scene in the Matrix where he's. Like, <sighs> I know kung fu. That's what he's trying to do. You just automatically upload something into somebody's brain and it's perspective. It's, it's it's the it's the automated kind of feeding of perspective and going through something without or learning something. It's just it's 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 a moment in time. And yep. if you can recall that moment in time, well, it's like hey, you know, you're injecting. Uh, Chinese or Mandarin as a language. Crazy. It's like, okay, I'm going to basically upload the process of an individual learning mm -hmm. ma Mandarin from beginning to end. And uh, whether those are someone else's thoughts or experiences or not, well, I guess that's the ultimate question. That's the ultimate question. It's scary, though. And then if you can, well, then, you know. What's crazy is he's trying to warn the world about AI, yet he's building this at the same time. It's like... <laughs> Like I'm like, oh, I'm so, warning you, but uh, you know, yeah. when it's it happens, I'm gonna be the one. <laughs> it's the research it. game, you know. <laughs> I'm it's like, ah, oh, man, like these. It's like I'm telling you, yeah. I'm telling you, Skynet's coming, and I own Skynet. <laughs> it's crazy, bro. Man. Guys, this has been great. I always wrap up all my podcasts asking three questions, so uh, I could do one, the other, at the same time doesn't matter. So, first question: What inspires you? Enrique. For me, um, always my family, uh, my parents, um, really like understanding where they came from and everything they did for me and me being able to now take the foundation they've been able to build and take it to the next level. Nope. Um, and I would also say his grind, his hustle. Um, the you're fact you're that one of you're one of a very few hand of handful of people that have ever that can keep up with my pace. Let's put it that way. I have a very fast pace. People, pe I, I've, I've been posting on social media for the past week. Don't try to keep up with me because you're going to get hurt. Don't try to keep up with me. And I find Nick's pace. Oh, actually, yeah, no, insane. I'm almost out of breath. I'm like, <laughs> whoa, okay. So There's, I, He's definitely one of a kind. You're not AI. having too many people like him. AI, AI he's AI. <laughs> uh, for me, I'd, I'd say uh, the people who, who believe in, in what I'm trying to achieve and the people that are inspired that I can inspire because that's I love it. Yeah, that's more that's everything. For me, I think of I think of what I want to do with my life, right? And those moments where other people get it. <laughs> Validation. <laughs> Not only get it, but stand behind it. Because mm -hmm. they like, see it. I see it. Yes. It's those, different. It hits those different. DMs <laughs> or those comments I get on my reels when it's like, I needed this. Bro. The general contractor good. will see the house once he has the foundation. He will. Right? Not yeah. a lot of people will be able to see that. Does that doesn't mean that he's gonna stop building. Exactly. That's that's a certain type of person. I'm gonna tell you a crazy story talking about Ultra. So I've never <laughs> told this story to anybody. So me and my buddy, we were like exhausted from a whole weekend of partying. We're sitting in, in on our car. In a, in a field somewhere. I don't even remember where this was. It was somewhere in Miami, but it was just a field. And he goes, bro, look at all this grass. And I said, 
No. Look at all these buildings. Vision. So important. So important it is. He saw a bunch of grass. I saw what you can build on that land. Right? When people buy into the vision, first off, you have to see the vision for yourself. And under no circumstances can you ever let go of that vision because no one's going to see it for you. But then when people buy into that vision, bro, and they see it with you, it's the most powerful thing I've ever seen in humanity. Momentum. Mm -hmm. And once that train gets going, like, I don't know if you knew this, a locomotive train, if you put a brick in front of it, once it's completely stopped, it won't move. Once it gets going and it gains speed and it's over a certain mile per hour, it can smash through a brick wall. It's momentum. is What you have behind you. Who you have behind you. Yes. Mm -hmm. And that's what it is. If you get those people who share the same value system, I think this is how we even opened up. Mm. You share the same value system. You share the same core beliefs um, and, and kind of like, you know, moral standing when it comes to certain things and what you're trying to achieve. And you can get people to stand behind that because not only do they want to see you succeed, they want to see the they want to see the people around you succeed as well. So mm -hmm. now you have everyone just with the same. That's a very dangerous, dangerous group of people. That's some of the most dangerous groups of people in, in the world in history. Mm. have been able to inspire the masses, right? Or some of the most powerful people in the world, some of the most legendary, right? Uh, it's inspiration, motivation. If mm. you can motivate or communicate motivation through this medium that we call speech, you can literally convince anybody to do anything, anything. you want. Effective communicators, I'm telling you. Yeah. The world is yours. The world is telling you. That's true. Second question, what's next for Enrique and Nick and TNA Associates? want to mention nope <laughs> yeah we can't go there um can't we're gonna revolutionize we're gonna revolutionize the world yeah we're gonna help business owners take their we're turning to investors we're going for we're turning into the support that people need to make the right decisions moving forward and that's the direction we're going into yeah. site to be released soon hopefully just follow follow our page Follow our page, CNA. Like Associates. It. This will like be it. a. I can see the vision, man. I can definitely see it. So, I got That's one back. more that we had yes than yeah, yesterday. That, <laughs> yep, that, I will say that. <laughs> and then the last thing: How do you guys want to be remembered? Good question. That's a good one. I've been known for asking um, good questions. Don't hold me to this. But I would definitely say people, I would want people to look at TNA as like these, this this agency that just came in, these group of young, talented, like-minded individuals that literally just flipped the whole digital marketing industry on its behind and just completely changed the way that marketing is being done like um, and the way that you think about it and the way yeah. that you go about it. Um, I think that leaving that legacy behind would definitely be something that we would look back in our 40s and our 50s and say, like, everything, all the sacrifices we made. Uh, shoot, we always, like, joke about it, like, eating waffles and eating cereal and not being able to, like, go have a nice little, have a nice meal at a restaurant or something like that. Like, just looking back and saying, like, it paid off, you know? Like, yeah. we were able to build this great empire and now we, we get to, you know, sit back and whether it's educate others and, and, and help them also be able to, replicate that and, and go about it you know down the road or whether it's at that point just saying you know what we want to just put our feet up go to mexico go to colombia whatever the case it is and just kind of kick it and, and just kind of go about it um from that point forward but definitely being able to revolutionize the whole industry and just the way that we do things i'm a person that from ever since i was a little kid i never saw things the way other people saw them and ever since i was a little kid i said even before I kind of knew what I wanted to do with my life, I said, I don't know what I'm going to do, but I know I see things differently, and I'm going to, people are going to see this one day. What I see in the world and how I see the world and what I see is possible, I'm going to show this to people one day. And the people that see this, their lives are never going to be the same. I've been telling myself that since I, ever since I was a little kid. And to see another group of people, that's why I love this podcast, because I get to connect with other people who kind of have the same mindset. So it's awesome. Nick, do you want to... The Montana mindset. The Montana there you go, there community. you go, there you go. Uh, I want to be remembered as a person who... who only gave to others 
and never and wasn't concerned with himself, mm. selfless, mm. Uh, mm. humble. Humble. We always talk about like being humble oh, yeah. is very <coughs> humility is probably the, I mm-hmm. think. I can tell you what I don't want to be remembered as is, is prideful. Mm. <laughs> that I want to be remembered as somebody who emotion or any anything like uh any biased statement would never come from my mouth because I always saw things objectively, but my ability to even look beyond that and see the potential of anything mm. and maybe painting a picture that now shows you or anyone that it's possible, mm. you know, just defying norms, breaking the rules in the legal sense, but mm-hmm. uh, changing the narrative, uh, relinquishing the norm, getting to a place where you can create anything. And that's, I think, where I want to be remembered. Someone who gave more than what he asked, uh, someone who um, was an innovator, and someone who helps people never stop believing in themselves. And I think if that if that's my legacy, I'm cool with that. Awesome. I'm, I usually add something, but I have nothing else to add. <laughs> All right, guys. Uh, pleasure being on here. How can people connect with you? Well, TNA.associates, TNA. look Associates. us up. Look us up. Online. Uh, Instagram. Instagram. Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, LinkedIn, Twitter. Too. And Twitter, yeah. TNA Associate. TNA dot associates. No dot com. No dot com, please. No dot com. Don't find us. No dot com. <laughs> Sounds like a rap song. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, hey, look, that's not not yeah. terrible. I no can dot com. TNA look. featuring MM. I like it. No dot com. The other day somebody zoomed in <laughs> and they cut out the end parts and it said Anamef. <laughs> oh like, my Yo. god Jesus Christ <laughs> <laughs> The art of communication yeah, Right It really is Perspective Perspective You too zoomed in You gotta and zoom out you just zoom out a little bit <laughs> That's why when, when you When you go on social media channels I gotta be careful Cause it's sometimes crazy. Don't manipulate It's crazy You'll just bro. see Anna Meth Anna Meth <laughs> <laughs> Think of some trailer trash Like And you see just like a, a little a little circle And it's just like <laughs> And they just see that right there It's a little hill It's like oh boy <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was funny that's it oh my god it's a great way to end it alrighty guys another episode of Montana Method Podcast with your host Nelson Rodriguez Jr. author of Montana Method you already know same same message different days same story if you're not chasing a dream life is meaningless push it to the limit the world is yours I'm done turn it off I've been out here hustling all my life every day we get into it I hear any streets that stay at night Like there's nothing to it When I was going through it, dog, I never got your call I never asked for nothing, no But now I want it all Promise I'ma do it Came from rags to riches Rags to riches Came from rags to riches Rags to riches Came from rags